with blue marlin fishing and all that kind of stuff, yeah. and you get uh, you get some fish, you have a massive belly in your line. What's the best way that you fight that fish? Do you chase the fish, or do you face the do you chase the line in the water? Um, it's it's a total setup thing. Let, let me um, get my little game boat out again. And here the, 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 the game fishing rules actually help you. Um, a lot of the game fishing rules, if you use them um, to their express limit, actually tell you what to do and how to catch big fish. And the rule that I'm going to talk about first is getting the rod out of the holder as soon as possible. Okay? Yep. Um, let me just set up this camera. I'll be there in just a sec. Where's that remote control going? Here we go. Hey Pete, where'd you get that Lego boat from? <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys um, are on Facebook. Um, and are anybody my friends on uh, Facebook? Yep. No, you can't have any more. won't let you. Yeah, I've never had many. It's just part of being a loner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, a kid came up and basically showed, you know, a, a, a proud dad showed what his kid had made. And I got in contact with him and said, mate, I would love one of those. And can you get your kid to make me one? And he did. So the kid made it for, for me and I sent him down a whole bunch of lures and caps and shirts and stuff. So, you know, it's about time I got another game boat and this is it. They're only about 24 bucks if you want to do them yourself, but um, they're pretty cool. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go up the top there. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit more, just a sec. Yeah, we're going up current. We'll get that going in a sec. Okay, so there's our game boat going down current, and the fish comes in and aggressively hits it. Okay. The most important thing of this tactic is that the boat must remain down current of the fish the whole time. As soon as that fish gets ahead of the boat, it's going to dive and you're going to be in hell. Okay? Yep. To minimise the belly in the line, would you increase your drag or decrease your drag? Okay, so you don't back off the drag. Okay? And the other best way of keeping the belly out of your line, because the belly is absolutely enormous, if that gets in there you've got no control of your fish whatsoever, is the boat keeps going away from the fish. Because that fish is going to go absolutely nuts. And there is no control over it over the next minute, so there's no point in trying to chase it, you're not going to catch it. And which direction is that fish going to go off in? It's going to go the other way, which helps you keep tight line in the first place right the thing that you don't want to give the fish is slack line if you give it slack line it's going to dive all right I'm on the wrong camera so we'll go over to there so we're basically going down current fish is aggressive comes in eats it and it's going to go hiking off that way and we're going to actually move away from it for a while and then the fish will arch you know how blues always go on this big arc, right? Yeah. And then we basically go forwards. Even if you're in a, a big game boat with a chair, this is all done in forward motion. You don't even back up in a game boat when all this is going on. You simply position yourself so you're going in the same direction as the fish. Okay? And it's not until that 60 seconds starts slowing down then you can start backing up towards where the fish is going so we're not actually following we're actually following where the fish is going you've got a general idea which direction it's going in we're not following the line because there's a big belly in it we're just going to end up doing this big circle and by backing up all we're going to do unless you're an incredibly good skipper and an incredibly strong angler and a very powerful angler all you're going to be doing is laying line in the water and the fish can do whatever it wants and you haven't got tight line and you've got no control of the fish whatsoever. Backing up a boat at the speed an angler can wind is very difficult. But by keeping that belly in the water, by keeping that belly in the water, basically the belly's keeping a tight line on the fish as well. And we're not backing up after it, 
all we're doing is trying to intercept it slowly and as you get to the keyboard you can actually catch it okay and generally if the fish swims again it'll actually swim away from the boat and not under it if you're going up current then everything's out of control basically the fish will dive then you've got to pull it up and, and all hell breaks loose okay then you have a very long fight by keeping the fish up current from you and you're down current of the fish you can really control that fish incredibly powerfully the other factor is though is we'll grab our fish is the angle that you're fighting the fish at you really want the fish to be at about 45 degrees or higher once it starts getting 45 degrees or lower then you've got no control over the fish remember the pectoral fins are so big and the width of the fish that it'll just simply keep swimming and probably swim down like a bib lure okay so you drive away from it which will actually pull it up going down current as soon as you drive away from it you actually find that the fish comes back up to the surface keep that distance from the fish till it settles on the surface then you basically move, maneuver to the fish at the speed that the um, that the angler can wind, which is generally very very slowly. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's show you this in action. Um, I've got a couple of video clips here, which might be of interest. We'll get rid of those photos for now. Oh, come on, just get rid of it. Do you think the new braided lines will help with a lot of that stuff? Now we can top shot and they've changed the rules. Not really. Not really. You still got it. <laughs> okay. All right. My, my background is actually fabrics, and uh, the reason I I studied all this stuff is is my background is actually designing yarns, designing filaments, designing knitting machines, designing fabrics, and designing clothing. So I know a fair bit about monofilament. I know a fair bit about braided stuff. Although braided stuff is a lot thinner because it's got fibres in it it's got a lot more drag than something that's totally round like monofilament so it's really not that big a deal difference like I know it's a lot thinner so it's around about the same as mono it's not really that much of an advantage in a trolling situation except it's got no stretch which is a great thing if you can keep pressure on a rod it's a very bad thing if you can't do those exercises uh, with those scales that I was talking about does that answer your question? Sort yeah. of. In other words, not a whole lot of difference between that and Dacron. And and for those of you who are, many of you fish cans 130s? Yep. You ever put a, hundred, a thousand yards of Dacron out the back and try to wind it in? Without a fish on it or nylon? It's the same. Isn't it? Yep. Well, there's, there's, there's no real benefit to it except it's thinning and you get a lot more on your reel which is a good thing but once again that doesn't make a whole lot of sense either all this going back to uh, smaller reels and uh, for heavy gear the purpose of a reel is a winch um, if you've got a little winch um, then the little reels don't have a whole lot of torque and torque is the ability to wind the handle against pressure and in our early days we actually went the other way for example on eight kilo gear at the moment i'm using size 16 reels but when i was fishing for records i was actually using international 30 reels for eight kilo line simply because it was so much easier to turn that handle against four kilos of drag than it was on a 16. and when we were use when i was using 24 i was actually using an 80 wide once again simply because it was just a whole lot easier to turn that handle against the drag of the reel because to keep the line tight and the rod bent when you start the stroke you've actually got to start turning the handle and actually lose a bit of traction before the reel bites and the spool starts turning again you would have seen this in thread line reels a lot where the spool turns you're not gathering anything well that's what really happens on the small reels as well and plus it's just pure physics that if you've got a rod and you're holding it there by putting more weight there it's easier to raise the tip which is why I used larger reels because it was simply a whole lot easier to hold the rod um, up the top 
and it was a whole lot easier to stroke if that reel weighed a, a lot. In fact, in the early days of uh, beach rod making, my first business was making uh, fishing rods. And in fact, we were the first guys to make black game rods, which was pretty remarkable. Uh, that's another story. But we actually used to fill the butts of beach rods, which were 14 foot, we used to fill them with lead. And when I started first making my light tackle game rods, I would actually put about a kilo of lead in the butt of it, simply because it just worked a whole lot better as a lever um, than a lighter rod, especially when, fiber, when uh, carbon came in. It's something people didn't notice too much when carbon came in, that it was a whole lot easier a whole lot easier to and lighter, but it was a lot harder to bend that rod. And a lot of that um, thing about carbon strength and it was harder to bend the rod wasn't the fact that the rod was stiffer or any different. It's just that it didn't have the weight on the bottom of it with the butt and the, and the thickness of the fiberglass to actually make that pivot work a whole lot better. I guess you guys didn't understand a word of that. Did you? Any of that make any sense at all? All right, we're going to put all of this into action now. Here we're actually switch baiting uh, for a little black. I'll give you the scenario. He's just hooked up there. And this will basically cover all the things I've spoken about, about fighting fish. So he's just had the shot then. Uh, we'll get going. This is a spin rod um, on a TSS4 plastic reel with a crap drag that works reasonably well. Um, we'll actually start that again in a sec and put it on your screen. So we'll start that again. It only doesn't go for long. Getting the shot now. Okay. All right, you might be able to see that better now. Getting the shot now, you can see the splash. Now we're at four seconds. See, we're still going forward. I'm not backing up. There's no gear in the in the uh, system. I know I'm down current as the fish, and I'm not panicking about going backing up after the fish now at all. The fish is doing its thing out the back there. A fair way out the back. This is six kilo line on a thread line outfit, and you can see now I'm backing up very slowly. You can see I'm actually not going where the fish is and I'm not going where the line is. I'm actually making sure that I'm actually getting down current of the fish. And I'm only going as slowly as that angler can keep the pressure on the rod. The angler's actually Brett Needham who fished with me for many years. You can see now that the fish is trying to get um, up current of me, up, down current of me and I've manoeuvred and I'm actually going sideways to the fish, just keeping pressure on it. And now we're gently easing to where the fish is going. Okay. Six kilo gear, making sure we're pulling it down current. Now I'm just going forward now because I can see the fish is pointed at the boat and I don't like that, so I grab the boat, spook the fish away from the boat. But because we're going down current, it actually pulls the fish straight up out of the water and we've tagged about a 45 kilo black on a spin outfit on six kilo line in about a minute, 15 seconds. With no cowboy. Okay? And that's simply by just doing exactly what I was telling you that we were doing. It's simply staying down current of the fish, keeping your drag up there, and we'll go through it again and just watch the rod tip. Can you see the screen clearly enough to see that rod? Yeah. Okay, this time, just watch Brett on the rod. Struck now at five seconds. <clears throat> In fact, I think he's just struck it then at 13 seconds. See how the rod's just staying bent the whole time? It's never straightening out. It's basically keeping bent the whole time. He's not pulling it high up most of the time. Right, he's holding it properly now. You see, now I'm pulling it down current. The fish just pops up.
Pretty much all there is to it. 